Hi, welcome to Fine TV. My name is Janet and today we are here at a movie's premiere titled Zara Spain After the Court. Uh, the movie basically touches on female genital mutilation. This is a story that is being told by a victim herself who has experienced what it has done to her mentally, emotionally and I feel like she was probably the best person to tell us this story. So. Tonight we will be educating, raising awareness on female genital mutilation and why sexual health should be talked about more often than hushed, especially among young women. And the main objective of this movie is to sensitize our people who believe that female genital mutilation is a tradition thing and it's a must. No, it's not a must because it has so many after effects yes. and it's affecting marriages and then mental health and so many stigma stigmatizations. So please bear with us and stay till the end of the show. Thank, Thank you. you. What's your inspiration behind this movie? Uh, my inspiration is me as an <laughs> FGM victim and survivor who um, undergone FGM at the age of 11. And um, since then it has been affecting my life in so many ways, both uh, mentally, physically, um, I would even say sexually. So I thought, um, the way it is affecting me, it is affecting other women or other girls out there. So there is a need for somebody to speak up. We find ourselves in a society where if you talk about sex, you are termed as a wayward person. So I felt the need that, you know what, at some point we need to break the silence. So I come up with a uh, movie. Um, it was shot on, it was shot, 77 minutes. Um, the movie looks into the life of a victim, somebody who cannot respond to sexual stimulant with her partner. So basically that's what the inspiration is. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how do you think we can make sure that something like this never repeats itself again? Right. Um, I guess that's the reason why we, we're all gathered here because, like I said, we need to raise awareness. Um, my target is mainly because um, all the people, I don't think it's easy, it's going to be easy to change their mindset yeah. because they, it is rooted in them. I thought it would be easier to change the mindset of younger people, or younger ladies, um, especially the ones that are married, the ones that are looking forward to getting married because at the end of the day they will become parents, they will be mothers. So I thought this movie, um, can be a tool of advocacy that way if they watch the effects of FGM the effect Zahra is going through because the, the, um, the, the main cast is Zahra and I played Zahra um, how she's affected from FGM they might change their mind because I think it has no not I think I know it it have no impact on um, someone's life the, the main reason why they practice FGM is because they think it prepares a girl child into womanhood and also protects you from high libido of sexual orgies. So we thought um, that's the main reason why they do it. But at the end of the day, it defeats the purpose because we have a lot of young female yes. who have gone, F who have undergone FGM and are victims of teenage pregnancy mm -hmm. at a very early age before even getting married. So you see, it doesn't make any sense. It's like ironic ironically, it doesn't. So mm -hmm. the purpose for this movie is to. Um, awake young women yes. to not allow their girl child to go through FGM simply because the um, religious belief or cultural practices, you know, I think it affects a lot in so many ways. So we just want to make sure we end FGM totally from this project we've just um, filmed. Thank you, you've been very strong. Yeah, you're welcome. And again, um, I believe not everybody will know what FGM means. Yeah. Yes. Many people have it, the way they call it in their own language. Yeah. So will you mind defining FGM for the people? Okay, so FGM, FGM, known as female genital mutilation, is the mutilation of the clitoris. I mean, it's very funny when some people that attacks me, FGM sympathizers, that are like, we don't have mutilation in Gambia, we have circumcision, but what's the point? As long as you cut something, you've mutilated yes, it. You've in mutilated other words, circum it. circumcised. It's the language barrier. Exactly, yes. probably. Maybe that's why they feel, I mean, yeah, there's no mutilation, it's circumcision. But yeah, 
um, it's the circumcision, the cutting of the girl's um, um, clitoris. And the reason why they do this is because, like I said, they do not want these girls to have high sex libido. They want them to have um, lower sexual urge. They feel only a wayward person. So I know there are two types of mutilations. Yeah. You have the partial one and the complete one. Yeah. Um, what are the differences when it comes to the traumatization and other things? Yeah. Do they go through the same lane or is it different? Um, actually, people people struggle FGM based on their the, the, the type of cuts. Okay. Like if you are given the um, partial cut, probably you may not go through so many trauma than the one who's been deeply cut, completely cut off. Like because at the end of the day, it stimulates your um, body when you are having an intercourse with your partner. So mainly in Gambia here, they practice the um, second type, you know, the complete one. That's like cutting the, the, the whole clitoris from the top and it's left with um, just, I don't, I would, I, the, the surface, you know. Yeah. So what's the point? When you are, I mean, getting ready to meet your partner, no matter how he stimulates you, most people here in Gambia, especially our female, will just lie there pretending to feel it because they don't want their man to feel bad but they actually do not feel it some of them we went so far that we had a conversation with them they would tell us after um, having sex with their partners they masturbate on their own to give themselves the sexual um, satisfaction they need so you see I mean why do we have to why do women have to go through all this I feel women are not tools just to make babies yeah. in as much as men want to have sexual feelings or, or sexual satisfaction women also I mean want to have sexual satisfaction yes. so cutting girls in the name of lowering their sexual satisfaction to uh, make them feel like this will make you a good girl to me it, it doesn't make any sense and definitely we need to stop it because at the end of the day it increases divorce rate and high rate of infidelity most of women who are circumcised they tend to not get satisfied easily because if you cannot satisfy them they feel like okay I've tried sex with you several times you cannot satisfy me let me try someone else maybe they can do it better some of them they're married they're cheating so what are you driving at Instead of protecting girls, you are leading them astray. And we have so many sexual infections, sexual diseases in this country. It's not safe. Some of them, it leads them. No wonder the, the HIV rate is getting high. And a girl who's got stand a chance more of um, encountering UTIs. Because you see, the, the clitoris is there to protect you. And um, we have also, our, our guest speaker is a certified nurse from MRC. She will elaborate more on how FGM aff affects um, women girls especially um, because she told me she has in, um, um, she has witnessed or she has tried delivering women who are caught and women who are not caught and women that are not caught have it easier when giving birth than women who, who got caught no wonder the um, high rate of maternal mortality is high in the Gambia because half of these these women are FGM victims they lose a lot of blood during childbirth before you know it you know there are so many challenges before before the ambulance reach to the um, hospital before before they have blood transfusion and so many other challenges women are encountered um, with from FGM so I definitely think FGM is a very inhuman practice and it should be stopped our old women were just urging you guys you ladies to please Put down the blades and cut no more. You get it. Thank you very much. No, yeah. uh, I just I have one last question. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say, would you say that the rate at which FGM is practiced now mm -hmm. is the same as at the time you experienced it? No, I would say because I I've, I've made a speech um, that I will be pre that I will. Um, that I will present to the, the audience. Okay. Um, okay, compared to before, like sometime around 2010, 11, 13, and now, the rate is reducing, but still, we're not satisfied with it. Okay. I feel if it's reducing, it will be just 2% out of um, 10. 10. Oh. And sadly, young women still, my age, feel the need to allow their girl child experience it because they've been blinded by culture. They think if you do not get, allow your girl child to be cut, um, there's a there's a specific word they, they call you in the local language. It's called solima. It means son of a bitch. Sorry for my language. Okay. You know, so because most of them don't want to be called that, yes. they feel you know what I'm taking my child, or Islam said this, or religion said that. But one thing do they do not understand is, FGM is not 
in the Quran. There is no verse in the Quran that says FGM is um, is a standard is, or a standard or legal or practicable. These are cultures our Prophet peace be upon him found people doing before he he was sent to preach people. So he saw these people practicing it. He told them, okay. That's, it's your culture, but do not cut everything off. Yeah. But what are they doing? Instead of cutting the tip, they cut the total clitoris. Leave you with nothing but depression, sad pain, and lack of sexual satisfaction. I think they shouldn't cut feel. any at all. And they should not cut any at all. Let them leave our clitoris alone. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Okay, our bling. Uh, can you tell me a little about the movie we're here to see today? Well, um, I've seen the taser and when it comes to FGM, everybody knows that it's a really bad, you know, harmful practice. Yes. It's really harming women and especially young girls. Yes. And me being an artist and an activist, I yes. use my music to talk about things that people are really going through, you know. So yes. I'm really looking forward to a great premiere today. Okay. Uh, what social impact do you think female genital mutilation has on our society how do you think it affects us well, in what measures um it affects us in so so many ways you know and this is a practice that i mean you don't really have to go through it to start raising awareness about yes, it you know it, it harms women especially um um let's say when it comes to their marriages you know they don't really um sexually there's always a problem there and you know it can make you have keloids you know excessive bleedings and it can really traumatize you know um, the person who has undergone FGM so it's really creating a bad impact in our society though it is banned um, we, sh we know that like people are still doing it yes. secretly, secretly but I just hope that you know all those people are caught and sent to the right place to yes I hope yeah. so too yeah. um, and one last question yeah. um, why, what, what do you think is the mentality, what do you think is the drive behind people who still practice that? Despite the fact that we've been, we've been speaking about yeah. it, they know it's wrong, they know yeah. every child is, is not supposed to go through that. Yeah. So what do you think still pushes them, despite all of this, well, to still do this? Yeah, um, it's culture and tradition. Okay. That's it, you know. You know, um, it's crazy. During when you're doing advocacy, yes. you know, we are always advised to be calm, patient because you never know who you're meeting outside there. But when it comes to people's traditions, some people they hold on to it so tightly that they don't want to, you know, let, let go. go. Even yes. if they're sure that this is really harmful, yes. they'll be like, okay, my mom has been through it, or my grand parent has gone through it, yes. so you know, my ch children should, should go through you know, it. even if they know that this is harmful you yes. know I mean that is I think that is where education comes in too, because so many people they probably they're facing these problems but mm -hmm. they don't really know that FGM is the root cause of this you okay. know so I mean we're trying our best to raise awareness I'm um, and I'm so proud, proud of, of Sally Tizi Job right now I'm yes. so proud of her yeah thank you very much it was lovely chatting with you thank you so much hi may I please know your name um, I'm Esther Anyanke. And you? I'm Magnus Akaine. You two look good. Thank you. Yeah, so Esther, why do you come to watch this movie? Well, actually, um, I want to learn more about the movie because right. it inspires us to know more about life and how things go in life. So I'm here to learn more and to experience more. Okay, so you are a man. And this movie is about a woman who have went through FGM. As a man, what advice will you give out to other women out there, mothers sending their daughters to do the FGM thing? Okay, um, female genital mutilation is something that should be obsolete by now because it has uh, created a lot of negative impact to the well-being of women and it has uh, created a lot of chaos in families and all that. So I believe a lot of awareness should be put out with this kind of movies and people should um, be more aware about the implications of FGM. Okay, so as a man, 
what are you going to do to help with the awareness of this FGM thing to the local people who don't know the bad side of it? Well, um, you might be a catalyst. Just find a way to stir up and talk about FGM more. The more people talk about it, the more people want to know why it's been um, a point of concern. So uh, I believe um, steady awareness and sensitization can do a lot to really um, pass the message across. Okay, what about you? So how will you help with the awareness, the agenda to stop it? Well, it's not going to be easy because like in our old days, you know, we already start doing it. But we know just need to um, push more and we need to say, say no to it, you know, and stop it. And yeah. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the movie and I like the dress. Thank you, Dad. Hi, good evening. Good evening. What's your name? My name is Meg Foster. I'm a personal trainer. Okay. Uh, can you tell us why we're here this evening? Well, I'm here to support Sally and the whole crew for this movie. I think it's very important and it's good to just, you know, talk about the issues that we have in our society. And this has been going on for so long and yes. I feel like this is the right time to just put it out there to the public. So I'm here to support. Okay. Uh, so why do you think we need to stop female genital mutilation? I know why, but yeah. there are people out there who still practice it who need to know why we need to stop it. So why do you think we need to stop this? I mean, I feel like we live in a culture that's very hush-hush. There are yes. things that our grandparents have been practicing and we don't think that it's necessarily right but we yes. still follow the tradition and I feel like people just need to open their eyes and notice these children the girls my age and even younger we're really suffering when we're with our partners we're suffering when we're you know given when we're in childbirth and stuff and this is nothing to be you know proud of when it yes. comes to culture because we're harming our girls yes. and it needs to stop because you know like um, Sally said previously like the divorce rate is really going down and yes. this has played a part in why girls are stepping out of their marriages or they're getting abused in their marriages. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at what age do you think female genital mutilations happen the most? I think at a young age when the girls cannot protest and say no, that's yeah. not something that they want. Yeah. Um, it almost happened to me when I was younger because the thing is we got tricked that we were going to go to Senegal for the holidays okay. and that's how they tricked my cousins into getting it done. But my aunt wanted me to ask my mom for permission first it, before I can get it done, which I did and my mom said absolutely not. Like So she said no yes. and explained to me why and the risk that pertains to, to having this um, female genital mutilation and I said no. So luckily enough I didn't get to experience it. Yeah. So I feel like most of the times it happens younger when the kids cannot say no and okay. they don't have a choice so the choice is being taken away from them. Okay.